about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Many of us here seated are yet to truly walk in the reality of obedience. A life that is totally sold out that if God says it and you verify that it is him, I'm on my way going and nothing will end and stop that journey. Let me read one more scripture before we begin to pray. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We are reading the first 13 verses. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy 8 verse 1. 28. 28. Did I say 8? My apologies. 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28, 28 and verse, verse 1. 1. And it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the, thy Lord thy God. Are you seeing the condition now? If thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, uh -huh. to observe, to observe, and to do, all and his to do how many? Oh. All his commandments, which uh -huh. I command you this day. What are the blessings? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all these blessings. Uh huh. Go ahead. We come on thee and overtake thee. And overtake you. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the if Lord. If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. What are the blessings? Number one. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of and your the body. the fruit of thy ground. The fruit of your ground. And the fruit of thy cattle. The fruit of your cattle. And the increase of thy kind. The increase of your kind. And the flocks of thy sheep. The flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall thou be basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall that be when thou comest in, uh -huh. and blessed shall that be when thou goest out. There are people that are only blessed when they come in. There are people that are only blessed when they go out. But he said, blessed shall you be whether you are coming in or going out. He says, the Lord shall cause thy enemies ah, that rise up against thee to be smitten, not in your absence, before your face. He said they shall come out against thee one way. And shall flee before thee seven ways. So don't blame those who you gossip about them in the secret. And the punishment starts right there as you are gossiping. And they don't even know. There is something on them that supervises compliance to the blessing. Are we together? The Lord shall command the blessing. This is it. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thy storehouses. Can I be honest with you? The blessing of God is more than money and resources. But it is impossible to carry the blessing. And then the area of resources will not tell. It is the most focal expression of the blessing of the Lord upon a man. I'm going to say something that will trouble you. Forgive me. If you have been in Christ and you have been in the kingdom for at least five to six years, diligently sitting under any kind of structured 
apostolic and prophetic mentorship structure and learning the ways of God and among the many things that answers in your life, your finances does not begin to have a testament. Something is wrong with your obedience. Believe me when I tell you. You may not have everything as yet. But when you plant, the crop does not grow in one day. But it also does not take one year to start coming out. It may not become a tree. But we need to begin to see evidence that it was truly planted. The Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, that they will flourish in the courts of our God. It even says in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. I read that scripture and it's another way of describing our father. That in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. There are people who are 40 and you will mistake them for 60. Do you know why? It's not just a demonic attack. Their life has been a plethora of the consequences of living in disobedience. In disobedience, anything will fight you, including what was sent to bless you. In disobedience, anything will fight you, including what was sent to bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read to 13 and we're done. The Lord, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that uh, rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Uh -huh. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Verse Lord, 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. Uh -huh. And he hath sworn, as, as he has sworn, sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments Now that's of the, the condition Lord. again. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. As he has sworn or commanded. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord. And walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And, and they, they shall be, be afraid, afraid of, of thee. thee. What a blessed man. Did the Bible not, did we not see this in the life of Isaac? That he began to prosper and continued prospering. And prospered until the point that the Philistines envied him. 11. We are reading to 13. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. He shall make you plenteous in goods. And in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Uh -huh. The heaven to give thee rain unto the land in his season. And to bless all the works of thy hand. As a result of this blessing, thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The last verse. And the Lord shall make thee the head ah. and not the tail. There it is. And thou shalt be above only. Say only. only. Somebody shall say only. Only. Above only. Above no only. possibility of going down. Thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If. 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 Thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. When the young boy Joshua was about to take over from God in Joshua, uh, from Moses in Joshua chapter 1, the Lord came to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. And he began to admonish him to be courageous. When we get to verse 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth that thou shalt meditate therein is that true day and night that thou mayest observe to do not some all that is written therein he says then shalt thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success
Take it down for me. I feel like singing a song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Listen carefully. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus every area where you do not see the power of god in your life is the area where your disobedience has restrained him Every area where you do not see the manifest goodness of God in your life. You can easily know the areas of disobedience in your life by looking at the manifestation of the blessing in your life. If you find out that the hand of God is strong upon your spiritual life, rich prayer life, rich word study life, there is obedience answering there. Obedience foreruns the manifestation of the blessing. If you find out that you are suffering in your finances in spite of the tongues you are praying, I tell you sincerely, check well. Obedience is authorizing pain somewhere. Before you see the glory of God, you must know his ways. And then you must walk in his ways. Are we together now? In Exodus chapter 33, when you read from verse 15, Moses prayed and he said, 33, I hope I got that right. And he said, show me, was it 13 now or 18? I don't know which one. That you show me your ways. And then, I think that should be 13 or so. Show me your ways. And then when you get to verse 18, he now says to show me your glory. I beseech you, verse 13, 33, 13. The first thing he requested was, show me your ways. Let me know your ways. Then, verse 18, he now said, show me your glory. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Leviticus 9 verse 6, we're about to pray. Everybody, please read. Are you ready? One to read. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear. The glory of the Lord does not just come because you need it. No. It will come at the instance there will always be something for you to do. If it is water you want to be turned to wine, he says go and fill six vessels. You want a great catch? Obey him and cut your net to the right side. Daniel, you want to see the mighty hand of God? Then refuse and defy the king's command as proof that you honor the Lord, even if you will be put in the lion's den. Listen to me. There are many families here under the sound of my voice, respectfully speaking. The reason why there's consistent conflict between husband and wife is because someone is not obeying scripture. When the man does not obey scripture to be Abba, husband, father, and priest, there will be trouble in that marriage. When the woman does not obey God to be wife, mother, and priest, there will be some there will be problem in that home. Now, yesterday, I took out on the men a bit, even though it's a men conference. But let me balance it also and respectfully talk to my mothers, my aunties, my sisters. Because we need to be careful with some of these trends we embrace, globally speaking. I'm not a sadist, but let me tell you, I need to balance it. The house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. There is a lot that we are shipping as far as the context of family is concerned. 
whether you like it or not, the man is the head of the home. Period. I apologize, but this is the truth. Please help. If there's anyone under the anointing there, just help them. We're about to pray. Listen. Dear women, the men are not those above them. They take care of those below them, but they will always fight those who claim equality with them. So there is a position that when a woman takes, I, I, because I, I know that I have, I have lovingly spoken to the men yesterday. We need to challenge ourselves. But I also need to balance it because there are sincere men who are bleeding quietly. We live in a world today where anything that happens once it is male and female, the man is at fault. It's easy to, rem to remember Women's Day, but Men's Day we even forget. The world sees men as a nuisance to civilization. But ask God why he's a man. The God of heaven decided to take on that position of a man. It's very important. Let me tell you this. I charge every woman in word of life. Take this as an admonishment from a heart that loves you sincerely. Treat your husband with honor. Treat your husband with respect. Throw away any pride. Don't allow society to interpret virtue as weakness. Our world today calls a virtuous woman a weak one. Treat him with honor and you will see things about that man you have never seen. Are we together? Men, we have charged ourselves under God. Don't come and beat anybody's daughter. Humiliate anybody's daughter. Make her life miserable because of marriage. No, it's unscriptural. No, it's unscriptural. It's unscriptural. The Bible never said to love a woman the way you want. It said, as Christ loved the church. If you understand that scripture, you should be afraid. Because no man can love a woman as Christ loved the church. That means you immediately understand that marriage is not between two people. Marriage is between two physical people. But marriage is between three entities. The Lord being the first, not the third. If your marriage is between you and your wife alone, you are in trouble. Especially in this end time. Quickly submit to the first authority. Your authority is only valid as a man to the degree to which you submit to the authority of Christ. But women, let's learn a lesson from Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. Every time Satan wants to attack Adam, he comes to his Eve. Satan wanting to attack the second Adam who is Christ is now attacking his Eve who is the church. When Satan wants to destroy the family, he looks for the Eve. Because it was Eve that was deceived. Man was not deceived. Men don't fall because of deception. They fall because of love. It's in your Bible. This is not a wise saying. Your, listen. The first Adam fell. The Bible says he took off the tree. She took off the tree and gave her husband who was there with her. It's in your Bible. The same way the second Adam, Jesus, he was not deceived. He came willingly to join his Eve. That means every woman in any home, be careful because you are the first point of attack when the devil wants to destroy your home. Hallelujah. Now, I don't claim to know everything about ministering and deliverance. But anybody who has been in the ministry of healing and deliverance, you can tell that out of 10 people in need of deliverance, about 7 or 8 may most likely be women. Let me tell you why. It's not because they are bad. Do you know that strangely speaking, the Holy Spirit names himself too after a woman. They are both called helpers. That means woman, if you want to understand your ministry, study the Holy Spirit. 
He is called helper. Hallelujah. Let's trust God for grace that our homes will reflect the character of Christ and change some of these negative statistics. And let me tell you this. Men, I stand and I beseech you by the message of God. It's time to exalt the word of God above and beyond culture, above and beyond ego, above and beyond intellectualism. We must submit to the word of God as final authority even over our homes. If you are wrong, say sorry. Don't just buy gifts. Say sorry. It's as simple as that. Women, do not be so educated or so wealthy or so proud that your knee becomes too far from touching the ground. It does not remove anything from you. The nobility of a woman is in her submission, not her argument, not her explanation. The same way the church is at its best to the degree to which we submit to Jesus. Let me speak especially to younger women, respectfully speaking. Beware of what you are learning online and around. Let me repeat it. Beware of what you are learning. I love you sincerely, but be careful. By the grace of God, this is a house that will communicate balanced truth, the whole counsel of God. Let's not just ship nonsense and be destroying our homes. Are we together? Forgive me, oh. Forgive me. Let me ask you for forgiveness now. Hallelujah. Since I have spoken about the man and the woman, children, listen to me. In the name of Jesus, I beseech you. Let me teach you something. When a father fights his son, you lose your honor. But when a son fights his father, you lose your life. You need to understand, there are allocations to this thing. When a father fights his son, you will lose your honor. But when a son fights his father, the Bible says your lamp will be taken away from you and you will be exposed to obscure darkness. We live in a world where rebellion is the definition of manliness. So many young people today find pride. Just Yes, it is true that some of our parents may not see things exactly the way we are. We have the privilege of westernization and enlightenment. But can I tell you, in the midst of their supposed limitation, there is grace by reason of parenthood. You must honor it. There are many children who would not be in trouble today had they listened to the supposed foolish counsel of parents. They may not go to school, but they have the eyes that can see. There are some things only age can bring. Listen, when mothers, when you breastfeed a child, no matter how healthy you are, that child does not become an adult. He becomes a well-nourished baby. When an adult starves himself and becomes sick, he does not turn into a baby. He only becomes a malnourished elder. So there are some things that are irreversible. A baby is a baby. An elder is an elder. Full stop. Hallelujah. In as much as Samuel would later become the priest and the prophet who would ordain Saul and even the kings. When God called Samuel, he called him through the voice of Eli. He went to Eli and said, Eli, you called me. Because he did not hear a cloud and a thunder. He heard the voice of Eli. Let us be careful. I'm saying this respectfully speaking, especially to young men of God. This campaign of tearing down fathers, insulting people because we think we have more revelation, little power, little exposure, so that our generation will not be cursed because of the pride of blindness. And let me tell you the truth. If there is anyone here and you are part of those insulting fathers, just because Noah's sons saw the father's nakedness does not mean he stopped being anointed. When he got up without being told, he said, who saw my nakedness? And he cursed him. Say, servant of servant shall you be. Can I tell you the truth? 
there are some things that are ordinances in the heaven or not by God. This our fathers you see, no, whether you are comfortable with how they are or not, leave it for God. But as far as you are concerned, they deserve our honor in life and even in death. This is the reason why every time I have the privilege of standing before any father of faith, hallelujah, I came here to, to, to bless you, but I also came here with my heart and with my consciousness when I'm done. Then I will go and receive my own blessing before I go back. I'm not stupid. I want to last. So MOG, before you rubbish and destroy your ministry, learn wisdom. There are some things that multiply with age. Hallelujah. Many of the things we criticize our fathers for, if they ever came to us, we would not stand one-tenth their stamina and endurance. Are we together? We are going to pray. I've exhausted my time. Please listen to me. There is only one prayer point we are going to cry unto God for. In fact, let me make it two. The first prayer point tonight is repentance. Genuine repentance. Lord, where have I authorized yokes of darkness and curses and anything through disobedience? I repent. Don't sweep it under the carpet. Please open your mouth in one minute and pray. It's a, it's a prayer of repentance. I have not given to match your blessing upon my life. Cry for repentance. Forgiveness. I have not loved you sincerely. I have enjoyed the blessings of the fathers and yet not accorded honor to them. Everything that has made for disobedience, please call upon the God of heaven. Someone is praying. He said, if I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me when I pray. Having the readiness to judge every disobedience, if and when your obedience is complete, Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying that first prayer. Wives, if you know you have been dishonoring to your husband sincerely, there is nothing to be ashamed of. The house of God is the threshing floor. I like you, while we are praying, there is no, everybody just hide your pride, except it's not the blessing you want. So wife, you know you have been dishonoring to your husband. You cry before God. Lord, I did it in ignorance. I thought if I submit myself, you would dishonor me. But now I have learned. Husbands, men, perhaps you've treated your wife and your children with dishonor. There is a dimension of the blessing of God, the sworn blessing, that only obedience brings. There might be members or leaders in this church. You have spoken against your leaders in shame. You have spoken against them, saying yes, sir, in the open. But criticizing and tearing them in the secret. It's time to pray and ask for forgiveness. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways, that I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Lift your voice and begin to pray, everybody. Please pray. Don't look around. Pray, you and Jesus. the spirit we repent from disobedience Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Father, 
the grace for complete obedience that when you speak no matter how uncomfortable the instruction is i obtain grace the grace for complete obedience go ahead and pray for ministry whatever he says to do do it Pray for the grace to obey. In the name of Jesus. Now, I know that my time is up. May I request that you please lend me five more minutes? I want to make, listen carefully. I want to make a very serious altar call right now. I am first a child of God before a man of God. And hear me, this is an assembly and a ministry that is a testament of the mercy of God. The thousands of people represented within this place and those following, every time we are gathered like this, there has to be somebody who needs Jesus genuinely. There are some of us, you have been around church, you have been around spiritual things, but you have never genuinely made a conscious decision for Jesus. Then there are those who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus with my heart, but for some time, because of the pressures of life, my life has gone haywire. Let me tell you the truth. I don't mean to scare you, but one day, this life is going to be over. Let me tell you sincerely, the Bible very clearly tells us that one day this life will be rolled like a curtain at the blast of the trumpet. By the announcing of the archangel, we will see his face again. The one we have lived all our lives for. And it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then that we who are alive and remain, that will be caught up with him in the air. Let me tell you the truth, it is not a parable. One day Jesus is going to return. Our father said this to us as infants and as children. Some of them have joined the cloud of witnesses today. Some of them like our father are still alive and remain as testaments of God's warning to us that we do not have an excuse. Can I tell you, I cannot force you to hand over your entire life to Jesus. But I can admonish you by the grace of God. When the spirit of truth is come, the Bible says that he will guide you into all truth. He will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. I am going to count one to five. For the sake of organization, we'll use just the aisles here and any other place the ushers will direct you. You are saying, Apostle, I'm standing in the presence of Jesus and I know that I need him. This is not some emotional Pentecostal thing. This is about your eternal destiny. As I count one to five, whether you are making this decision for the first time or rededicating your life, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand right here. You can choose to ignore it out of pride. It says if you reject me before men, I will reject you before my father. My counting begins. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me. Two. Are you coming? I have made a choice. To listen for your voice wherever you may lead, I will go. I see you right where you are. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. I see those who are up the balcony, those who are watching by way of television, watching by way of internet from across the world America, Europe, Africa. Here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. 
the Bible says in that day when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Are we still celebrating them? Apostle, I want to come out, but I'm not sure if I am saved. Join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. If you're coming, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. One more minute and we're done. We'll begin our prayer. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. With all my heart, with all I am, I will seek to honor your command. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. Thank you very much for this bold decision. I see you. Jesus himself is seeing you. Now, please may I request... Some of you are kneeling, some of you are standing, some of you are crying. It does not matter. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like being called to come and receive an award. Except that this surpasses every other gift you will ever have and receive. May I request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender. Everyone, everyone who is making this decision, lift your right hand fire, high above your head. Please say this loud and clear. You are not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I willingly receive Jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare by the authority of scripture that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. No one can come to the Son, to the Father except through the Son. And Lord, these ones have come boldly making this declaration. The Bible declares that as many who will come, you will in no wise cast away. We thank you for the gift of salvation and the power of the gospel by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus i call you recipients of the life of god i decree and declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i commend you to the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word that you be grounded and established in righteousness from tonight you go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. Okay, now please, here's an instruction. Remember, we just spoke about obedience. May I please request for a minute or two, there will be leaders standing in front of you. I'm seeing, please wave your hands, all the leaders. I want you to follow all of them, whatever direction, up okay this way all of you my left which would be your right if you're facing me let's celebrate them as they go a few counselors will have a word with you and then please all of you in concert anyone who sat close to you if they did not pick their bags and their bibles please their neighbors you will be their keepers to help them those up the balcony please follow can i have someone waving his hand so that those up will see God bless you. Someone is waving his hands. Word of life, is this the best you can do? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend 
to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.